All right. Well, uh, let's let's go ahead and just okay, dive right on into now. our. Uh, Let's dive into our first topic here, which is networks and partnerships. And looking at uh, understanding just this basic platform, again, it's, it's about making sure that our language is the same so that we're understanding the same thing. And I, I hope you got a chance to read the foundational documents. If, if you didn't get a chance, I strongly encourage you to go back and read them. Uh, Dave. Hackett actually wrote the um, the one on networks and partnerships, and I just thought he did a really outstanding job of clarifying certain things. And we'll go through a little bit of what he shared and and uh, grow up from or develop from that. Um, so let's look at this first verse here, Romans 15 and 16. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's just uh, it, it's just such a beautiful picture, isn't it, of what our networks and partnerships are trying to do, really to live in one accord, to live in such a way that, uh, that it's so clear that, that we're together on this um, and that we're striving towards the same thing. Um, so as we go into this, I want to go ahead and set the definitions um, and talk talk through this for just a second. So what is a network? Uh, a network is any group of individuals or organizations sharing a common interest who regularly communicate with each other to enhance their individual purposes. Now, a few different things are really important in this. Again, sharing that common interest that regularly communicate. If I just meet someone on the street and, and that's it, or if a couple of us get together once, not necessarily a network, but really are regularly communicate and are trying to enhance their individual purposes there. Um, so that's network. And, and again, these are the definitions that um, that Dave put in in his presentation or in his paper in the foundational document. And, and again, just solid for us to look at. So what's the difference then with this idea of partnership? Any group of individuals or organizations sharing a common interest who regularly communicate, plan, and work together to achieve a common vision beyond the capacity of any one of the individual partners. Uh, and, and so many of you strive for that, even if, even if you're in a network. I've heard you talk and use that language so often. Um, so why is it important? What, what is it about this? Um, that we're really getting at. Why, why are we even starting with this necessarily? And, and really it comes down to one thing, and it, and it comes down to expectations. We are setting the standard of expectations by the way that we define who we are. Um, this whole idea of, of disappointment, expectations carry weight to them. And us defining whether or not we're a network or a partnership or where we fall in the middle because so often it can't be clearly delineated and I understand that I I get that it's been so fun to travel around and be a part of your uh, of your steering committee of your facilitation team meetings or of your consultations and hear how you describe it um, and and sometimes there's clarity and other times there's this vagueness but I think until we learn how to communicate it, we're setting up expectations. And, and here's, the, here's the reality of it, that we don't want to create disappointment. Uh, the expectations over reality, this is a really important thing because when there's vagueness, uh, we're creating space for that to happen. And where something might be clear in our minds, it's not always clear with our entire networks. I thought this was a really helpful diagram in looking at this process, um, and, and I'm not sure that I agree w and love everything about this, but it was really helpful if you look at just the background and this idea of turf and trust, and those a lot of times become important factors as we're developing or as we're working in either networks and partnerships, and how much do we have? How much are we holding on to our own turf? Are we protecting what we have, and how much are we open-handedly trusting uh, the group? And so going from this awareness um, to the sharing of information, and then to this idea of sharing resources. Notice that's not where we start, 
and then co-execution. Are we doing something together? And then the final then would be a co-creation. Are we creating something together? With a lot of, uh, of your networks, with a lot of your partnerships, we have this desire to co-create. Um, and yet, are we communicating how much that really is asking of our people? Um, and maybe we need to allow them the time to simply share a little bit of their resources. And that's a little bit what Lucas will talk with us about. And, and then be a part of things before we're actually in asking them to fully commit to create something together with us. Understand that that's, a, that's an important distinction that we have to remember. Networks and partnerships, as, as a whole, a lot of times we just kind of go through this um, over, um, over the process of, of community to network to partnership and then a con contractual membership. And, and some of you have pretty defined memberships and others it's pretty loose and come to the consultation and we love you and so you're a part of us and th there's nothing wrong with that. And actually you'll find that at times um, there, you, you go with too much of that membership. And I know a lot of you are in this discussion right now of how much can we require of those that are a part of us. And I would just encourage you to remember that inclusivity is so important as we're dealing with kingdom issues. So as we're talking about this continuum of collaborative efforts, remember that we have networks and partnerships, a shared common interest, whereas at partnerships, a shared common vision where we're working together. Now, some of you are in networks right now, and that's what you've defined yourself as, and that's, that's great, sharing this common interest. Within that, then, you'll find that there are certain things where you have actually then uh, dis defined work groups, and you define out the strategic projects, and just want to get things done even within the context of a network. That, that's fully uh, appropriate, fully uh, well-developed. Um, it just adds a little bit to your complexity. And again, if we're talking about expectations, clarifying that that's one portion of what you're doing or one aspect is really the key. So if we're going back to this idea of expectations, remember that that's where this becomes so important to understand or to be able to define that. I, I thought this was a great quote. Partnerships often do network level activity. In other words, they're sharing common interest. They're engaged in this discussion, but networks rarely do partnership level activity. Um, and you'll find that in isolation, or a lot of your networks will have spin-offs that become partnerships. Uh, and that's a, that's a really healthy byproduct. That, in my opinion, and what we believe as a Vision Synergy team is that should be happening in your networks. There should be partnerships that are spinning off. But as a rule, as setting expectations, be aware of this statement. It's really important that we, we're clear on that. So what? What's the big deal about this? M my question is simply this. How are you communicating your expectations? Um, how, are you, how are you clarifying? Are you presenting? When people are asking about, hey, what is your network about? What does your partnership do? Are you able to articulate if you're there for people to share information to get new learning? Or are you asking them to fully commit to being a part of the activities, of the plan, of shared resources? So often, um, people that are looking in, and so often at our consultations, people are coming and they're sharing and they're testing the water. So they're, they're sampling it. Learning as a facilitation team to clarify and to speak clearly about what your desired goal would be for them is really important. And, and how are you then fulfilling your collaborative efforts vision through clarifying where you stand on the continuum? Uh, as a network, to try to ask everyone to be engaged in a partnership isn't realistic. It's not going to happen. Um, that's not why they're there. That's not what you've set by the language that you're using. So the language becomes extremely important. And have you reviewed this idea of expectations and alignment in the context of networks and partnerships? We're going to talk in the next webinar a lot about this idea of alignment. Um, 
it, our, our actions, our vision is everything aligned so that there's clarity, so that we get away from that idea of, of disappointment because of failed expectations. But are we consistent uh, in what we're actually doing? So I encourage you uh, to think through that. 